Who here today, who's under the sound of my voice that can say we spend, you spend enough time with God? Who here under the sound of my voice, God hasn't been pulling you and say, come on, spend some more time with me. We all got to spend some more time with you without distraction. And you'll find out he's real. Does anybody know God is real? He'll show up with an invitation. You got to separate yourself and invite him in. You got to pray. You got to pray till the room shakes. Pray till you feel better. You got to pray till he answers. You got to pray till you ain't got no more words. You got to pray till you ain't got no more tears. How many times did God deliver his people when they prayed the Bible or holiness? Should I say? Holiness is diametrically opposed to everything the world teaches. Everything. Holiness is opposed to everything the world says is normal. The Bible is right, somebody wrong. The Bible is right and everybody else is dead wrong. Everything in the Bible, everything, every word, every concept, every scripture is opposed to this current world system. Up is really down. Down is all around. If you wanna go up, you gotta get down on your knees. If you wanna destroy your enemy, you gotta pray. If you wanna be smart, got to be stupid. 1 Corinthians 3.18 says, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him be a fool that he may be wise. Yes, you're wrong. Your morals means nothing to God. God decides what's right and what's wrong. So you, cre you created your morals, your own morals in your little lifetime. The little time you spend here on earth, you created your own moral. But God exists outside of time. That's why your morals will die when you die. You need a better foundation. You need a firm structure. Holiness. Holiness. Holiness existed before your daddy met your mama. Holiness existed before your daddy was born. You can comply or not. Your choice. Here's the paradox, if you will. Here is the Bible opposing the world system. If you're living in this world and trying to pattern your life to the fullest without God, you're missing out. Because the Bible says, for whosoever will save his life is going to lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, that's the person that should find it. You can go to the best schools in the world, get your double PhD, if that's a such thing. You can become a consumer get your house, travel the entire world, and you can really have nothing because that's not your life. God planned your life before you even got here. And you'll only find your life if you're willing to give up this system. I pray, I pray I could pull you out of this system. The Apostle Paul said, we don't speak the words which man's wisdom teaches, but we speak what the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, help me today, Lord Jesus. Your intellect doesn't matter here. You can't impress God with the intelligence he gave you. You can't challenge God with the wisdom you acquired on the earth that he created. We gotta humble ourselves and yield to the word of God. Sometimes the word of God don't make no sense. The Bible clearly tells you that's the purpose of today's message. Lesson. In 1 Corinthians 1 27, it says, But God chooses the foolish thing of the world to confound the wise. God got some foolish things to mess your mind up. It says, And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God can choose the simplest thing and make the wisest man look like a big dummy. God can choose the weakest thing and make the strongest thing look weak, like a soft word, turn it away wrath. You can learn as much as your brain can tolerate, but if you don't know how to save your only soul, God is the one that tells you what's in the back of the book before he writes the beginning of the book. Y'all watch out yesterday? Isaiah 46, 10, declaring the end, of, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that haven't happened yet. 
the prophecies of the Bible are 100% accurate. It's the only place that tells you how this world will end and how the new world begins. God said, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. The kind of God we serve. Where did God declare the end in the beginning? Where did he declare the end in the beginning? When he said the elder to serve the longer. If you want to go up, you must get down on your knees. If you want to be exalted, you have to humble yourself. First Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the right time. If you want God to fight for you, you got to hold your peace. If you want to live, you got to die. If you want to rise up with God, you got to get buried. The Bible, holiness, is the complete opposite of everything you've ever learned in this world system. I've seen people recite prayer. I've seen people who haven't committed their lives to God covet the promises written in scripture. No, 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 you have to follow the prescription. You have to do what the instructions say. You want a better life? You, do you want the best life? You gotta get buried. Romans 6, 4 says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. The same way Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, the same way we also should walk in the newness of life. You have to be buried with God by baptism. You have to bury your old life. That's the point of baptism, even though it makes no sense. It's not optional. Who needs all that stuff? It don't take all that. All I got to do is believe, right? All I need is faith in God. Well, the scriptures disagree with you. James 2.14 says, what does it profit, my brethren, my brothers, even though a man says he has faith, even if you got faith and have not works, he's asking a question, can faith save him? I need you to answer James. James is asking a rhetorical question. Faith alone, believing in God alone, contrary to popular belief, you have to work out your soul salvation. Faith ain't enough. For well, verily I say unto you, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, see now God, God is talking about, that makes sense? Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. The smallest seed can make the biggest thing move. That's the point of that. You don't need a bulldozer. You need faith. A little dap will do. But faith in what? You got to get a promise. You got to see a vision. You got to spend time with God. Once God says he'll do it, believe what he said. Blind faith doesn't work. You got to get a word from God and have faith in that word. How are you going to get that word unless you spend time with him? How are you going to get a word from God? How are you going to get a promise from God unless you spend time with him? You can try to escape this world system. They set this system up, not God. They set this system up without your approval or your input. Where were you when they set this system up? The system you're trying to follow. There's only one way out, the truth. God's word is the truth. It's God's word that will set you free. What sense does it make for you to be physically free, but rather stay in the system? It's the word that tells you you're not supposed to be here in the first place. It's this current world system that tells you everything is okay. Do your heart's desire, have fun. God will accept you, but it's the truth that will set you free from this world system and teach you how to develop a culture of keeping God's word. This world system or worldliness is dangerous. If you follow it, you'll realize too late. It's the opposite of holiness. When you come to God, you must be delivered from this world system. That's what I'm trying to pervade pro to you today. I'm trying to get the worldliness out of you and get you separated from the world. God's word is where deliverance comes from. And deliverance is not going to require might. It's going to require faith in the word of God. That's why he told us early in Exodus. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. You can fight or you can pray. You can run here and there, quit this job, divorce that person, buy this house. You can stress 
or you can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Husband acting a fool, going to fast. Kids going crazy, begin to worship. Supervisor getting on your nerves, pray. I know it don't make sense. Not supposed to. That's why we all, all of us got to spend more time with God. Who here today, who's under the sound of my voice that can say we spend, you spend enough time with God? Who here under the sound of my voice, God hasn't been pulling you and say, come on, spend some more time with me. We all got to spend some more time with you without distraction. And you'll find out he's real. Does anybody know God is real? He'll show up with an invitation. You got to separate yourself and invite him in. You got to pray. You got to pray till the room shakes. Pray till you feel better. You got to pray till he answers. You got to pray till you ain't got no more words. You got to pray till you ain't got no more tears. How many times did God deliver his people when they prayed? It took one prayer to stop the sun from moving. It took one prayer to send fire from heaven. It took one prayer to raise the dead, heal the sick, bind up the brokenhearted. Why don't you stop complaining and start praying? Forget your prayer partner. Talk to Jesus. Not laying hands on you. Lay hands on yourself. Get out of the prayer line. Get on your knees. Isaiah 1, 18. God says, come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Listen how awesome God is. Asking for you to come and just talk to him about your life. It's okay. Don't be afraid. Don't feel weird. He said, although your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they should be as wool. But first he said, let's reason together. The God of the universe, the God that loves judgment, is taking a space of time to offer you an opportunity to reason with him. It's time to talk to him while he'll allow it. He says, come, let's reason together. God wants to talk to you. Holiness, God's system is diametrically opposed to this world's system. God wants you to live your life and condition your mind to be the complete opposite of this world. The complete opposite of this world system. I'm gonna give you a few scriptures. Bear with me. I'm gonna give you a few scriptures to show you exactly what I mean. Such as Matthew 6, 15. It says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, if you don't forgive people, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So the same God that promises to punish you for sin, he can and he will forgive you for sin. That don't make no sense. God specializes in salvation. He has the power to save. Salvation requires forgiveness. God can forgive you. Talk to him about it. That's what y'all should be doing. Y'all should be talking to him about forgiving you. You're walking around this world. You're walking around your life with the stain and the burden of sin. You're retaining the consequences in your soul. And God is so merciful. He'll even fight your enemy. Five of you will pursue a hundred and a hundred of you will pursue 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. That math don't math. But try God. See if he can't make the crooked way straight. See if he can't bring the high place down. Try God and see if he won't exalt the valley in your life, in your favor, just for you. That's why you shouldn't deal with drama. It would, be, it would be good for you to separate yourself from toxic people. Even if they're your kinfolk. Just separate. Before the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You can't lose with the stuff we use. We use the word of God. We use the power of worship. Spiritual things are mighty through God. To pulling down of strongholds. You're stressing for nothing. You're worrying for no reason. Anxiety will destroy you. There will never be no peace until the Prince of Peace is invited in. I told you you got to invite him in. That's your weapon. That's your resource. Get tied up. Get wrapped up in Jesus. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. That means say no to your flesh. And take up his cross and follow me. What does it mean to take up your cross? That means don't try to fix your life's problems. Take them, take them up, bring them to God. Cast your burdens on him because he cares for you. Give him your burdens. Give him the stuff you're worried about. I want to encourage you to pray. 
I want to encourage you to pray. Then pray some more. Get to the point where you wonder if God is tired of talking. To you. Get to the point where you where you 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 talk to God so much. You say, Lord, am I bothering you? He will never get tired of you. But imagine talking to God so much that you in your own mind, you talk to God so much that you in your own mind wonder if he's sick of hearing your voice. You mean the voice he created? He loves it. It's his voice that he gave you. And you're the only person with it. So talk to your God. Talk to him often. I told you you can have everything and have nothing. That don't make no sense. But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? Get the whole world, get everything in it, but you lose your only soul. Do you see what's paramount here? Judgment day is guaranteed. What if you gain all of your heart's desire, everything you ever wanted, and one hour before the Lord returns, you haven't purified your soul? What if you haven't cleansed your heart? What if you haven't been fully forgiven? You can have every worldly thing, but lose everything in one hour. Let me show you a few more scriptures. That makes no sense. They used to sing, I've been to God and got just what I wanted. But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There's a way to get things. Go to God first. But the natural man, the carnally minded man, the worldly minded person, the person that think they can plan their own life, the Bible says that person can't receive the things of the Spirit of God because they're foolishness to him. Gospel music is foolishness to some people. You listen to that all the time? Gathering for worship is foolishness to some people. Watching this channel every Tuesday and Friday at 7 p.m. don't make no sense to some people. They'd rather watch something fun. The Bible says neither can he know them. He's not going to be able to understand this. Because these things are only stood, understood while you're in the spirit. Matthew 16, 25. For whosoever will save his life, shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, shall find it. Imagine if you spent the same amount of time with God as you spent in the gym. Nothing wrong with going to the gym. Working out is good for you. Please work out. Work on your body. I'm asking you to work on your spirit. I'm asking you to wash your soul of all your past. I'm asking you to talk to God so that you can clear up some things, that you can deal with some childhood issues, that you can clear your spirit. There's only one doctrine found anywhere in the Bible, and that's the apostle or the apostolic doctrine. The world tells you to be a loner, do your own thing. Just believe in God. It's not necessary to be part of a fellowship. You can just be spiritual without being a part of a congregation. But the scriptures disagree with you. It says, and they continued without changing in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and having dinner and in prayers. When is the time to pray? John 14, 15 says, if you love me, thank you, you just said that. If you love me, keep my commandment. The only way to show God you love him is to keep his commandment. Would I buy my wife some edible arrangements and send it to her job and make everybody mad? That means I love you. When I buy my kids new Jordans, that means I love you. That's my love language. What's God's love language? He just told you. If you love me, you ain't got to say it. Prove it by keeping my commandment. Do you love God? Prove it. God told the prophet Ezra, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you the future. Whatever you see, he told him, write it in a book, but then hide it. What? That don't make no sense. What's the point of showing me? What's the point of writing it? God has the master plan. God is in full control. He will reveal his word to whom he desires. And who he doesn't want to know, he'll just hide it. God expects you to link up with a spiritual leader so he can reveal spiritual things, secret spiritual things to you. The way God operates never makes sense to our natural human mind. God said be perfect. That don't make any sense. God said be holy. Is that possible? God will never charge you to do a thing, then punish you because you can't do the thing. 
That's an unjust God. If he said be holy, you can be holy. Being holy is the opposite of what the world says. Speak unto the, he says, speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. Say unto them, you shall be holy. Because the Lord your God, the Lord your God is holy. Like that? Why is God telling people to be holy and separate and sanctified? Because of the promises he made with Abraham. That's why he's talking to these people. Because he made a promise with their father. It is Abraham that received the promise from God. And it is here that my aphorism, if you want God to give you something, you got to give God something. This is where it starts to make sense. Because Abraham did a mighty work for the Lord. He slayed a bunch of giants. He destroyed many idols, including his own father's idol. What was his father's name? Destroyed his own daddy's idol. God says, hey, Abraham, you're my homie. Since you did something for me, what do you want me to do for you? Abraham said, well, I want a son, but that don't make no sense. It's not possible for my old wife to have kids. Abraham, 99 years old. Sarah, 90 years old. God said, I got you. There's the promise. He got a promise from spending time with God. And you got old lying Sarah. Start laughing within herself. She started laughing within herself and the Lord heard her. If God can hear in, in, internal laughter, please don't think he can't hear your internal prayer. I know it don't make sense talking to a God you can't see. I know it don't make sense Praying and your situation ain't getting better. But we serve a God of the impossible. Is there anything too hard for God? Your test, the test that you have to take, it ain't too hard for God. Your promotion ain't too hard. Your marriage ain't too hard. You want God to save your kids? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Keep on praying. You ain't even got to open your mouth. He hears you. Say it. I want y'all to say it. Say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. He hears me. See how that feels? He hears me. God hears me. Everybody listening, say it to yourself. He hears me. Oh, he hears your prayers. He sees your tears. And he's able. He got power to deliver you. Time to push the plate back. I want y'all to pay attention. God been telling you, you got to fast more. Haven't he? Cancel your next event. Talk to God. It's time to to put social media and entertainment down for a while. You know, God been pulling you, telling you to get closer to him, haven't he? Hear his voice and obey. I know it don't make sense to spend hours praying. I know it don't make sense to spend days fasting, but in this final hour, God is looking to hear from you. Oh, it's prayer time. What will you be doing one hour before the Lord returns? Will you be trying to get ready? Will you have his spirit? Romans 8 and 9 says, Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, if any man does not have the Holy Ghost, the Bible says he is none of his. What will you be doing one hour before the Lord returns? The entire Bible is set up to make no sense. That's how it's set up. God told Abraham, All right, I got you. I'll give you a son. But next week, cut his foreskin off. What? That son you asked me for, Abraham, he old enough now. Take a knife, put it in his heart, then set him on fire for me, please and tongues. You see, God used foolishness to blow your mind. Your intellect means nothing. Your high IQ means nothing. Your accolades and degrees means nothing if you don't prove to him that you love him. And holiness is the only way to prove it. He made the rules. He set it up. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. And you say, oh, oh, I can't live holy. Is there anything too hard for God? Heartache ain't too hard for God. Depression? No. Anxiety? Move. I serve a God who hears my secret prayers. How can you imagine a God that can hear your secret prayers? Can you imagine a God that hears you? Did you know when you have the Holy Ghost, he intercedes for you with moans and groans that can't be honored. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Now that you've been baptized in Jesus' name, 
You need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God coming to take up residence inside of you, to intercede for you, to mediate for you, to help you to live holy. I know it don't make sense, but this is the final hour. This is your only soul. But I'm a good person. But I'm moral. I have values. God said, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're none of his. Stop trying to make sense out of spiritual things with your natural mind and just obey. Stop listening to anybody tell you all you got to do is believe and just obey the Bible. Romans 8.25 says, but if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. This is how God operates. Nothing ever makes sense. I struggled with this message for a year because it didn't make sense. That's why you need an anointed spiritual leader that spent some time with God. God has given revelation in his final hour to warn his people that he is literally on his way. That's what we're hoping for. Although we don't see him now, that's what we're waiting for. That's who you should be hoping for and patiently waiting for. If you don't have the Holy Ghost when he returns, what's your plan? What excuse do you think he will accept? Tell me, what do you think he's going he gonna to accept? What are you going to tell him? Don't go to bed tonight without asking God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. It's too late for anything else. It's too late to be wrong and not have the evidence that you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. It's too late to be wrong and end up saying, I thought I had to, all I had to do was believe. It's too late for that. We don't have time for reconciliation when he returns. We have to get it right now because the Bible says God is coming back without mercy. Now we need to get it right. Now we need to talk to him. Now we need to repent. Now we need to separate. Now we need him. Now we need forgiveness. Now. Now you need to get on your knees and tell God you're sorry. Stop listening to me and go talk to God. You're still sitting there and this is a perfect time to get it right. This is a perfect time to make him a promise. This is a perfect time to tell him you'll change. I'll do something different. I want to be saved. I want to give my life to you, Lord. I don't want to be the same this time next week, this time next year. I want you to save me, God. I want you to help me, God. I'm sorry for every single solitary sin that I've ever committed. Help me, God. Save me, God. That's what you should be talking to God about right now. Watch this video again. Listen to it again. Go rewind it. Listen to it again. Put everything else to the side and start talking to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Trust me with your, with your forgiveness, yeah, yeah.